Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Greatness Engineering Hour show. Today, we are having another amazing show and another amazing guest. And you know that I always bring you champions, great net engineers, and people who have stories of triumph. And, uh, and I hope that you're going to have, you know, you're going to be inspired by uh, the story today because the person that I have is just so energetic. It's going to be, it's going to be fire today. I'm pretty sure. And, you know, and I, I, uh, I, I ask you, please make sure you take notes, have your notepad, have your pen, because there's going to be a lot of nuggets actually that, uh, you know, the, my guest is going is to drop today. And I'm pretty sure you're not going to leave this platform without, you know, without uh, being completely wow today. So today, you know, um, uh, we're going to Canada and uh, we having, uh, like I said, an exceptional uh an exceptional lady. She is uh, she is a, a powerhouse. Uh, if I if I express myself that way, and uh, she she is an imp inspirational and motivational uh, speaker, uh, and we we call her unstoppable because she has so much energy, and she's been you know she's achieved so much. And so you, you're going to be amazed by, by, by her story. She's, uh, she's, she's been number one uh, international mega success and TED, you know, speaker. She, she, has, she spoke, you know, everywhere, you know, globally. I mean, she, she's been to 40 plus countries. She's shared, you know, stage and, you know, events with Dr. Phil, Jen Fonda, Michael Douglas, uh, Meg Gibson, and you, you name it. And she's just uh, she's just full of energy. She's been in magazines such as Oprah O. Uh, you know she's she's been in ABC, BBC, CBC, everywhere. And she she is uh, you know she she is she was born with um, she was born a four way amputee with no hands and no legs. But it didn't actually deter us deter her to accomplish what she, what she, she accomplished today and to become the best version of herself and a mantra i mean you know and and you're going to be blown out is that you know if i can do it you can do it so you have no excuse you know when you're going to have you're going to listen to her i'm pretty sure you you leave and say okay i have no excuse at all so that's really what i want so come in and uh, and join us uh, because uh, we're gonna start, and uh, and I'm gonna bring our our guest, Unstoppable Tracy, now. So get ready. We're gonna start this uh, an amazing conversation with uh, with Tracy. started to be more aware of some of the abusive sides of Welcome to the Greatness Engineering Hour show. It's 
such a pleasure to have you today and to be able to have a nice conversation and also, you know, get a bit of your energy because you have so much energy and I want, I want my audience to really feel it today. So let's start and, you know, let us know who you are because not everybody knows you and, you know, what you're up to and, uh, and, and we'll, we'll start from there. Oh, it is so wonderful to be engineering greatness this morning with you. You know, we get to refuel our unstoppable energy. Mm -hmm. The two of us were just on fire with our energy together. We're very lucky to be with the world. And so I started as a humanitarian of sorts uh, in my 20s, traveling mm -hmm. the world as a teacher in Uganda and Jamaica and Mexico, Nepal, 20 developing countries. And in this year in Canada, I'm a Canadian, mm -hmm. I am in the Canada Hall of Fame, right next to our past prime minister and Wayne Gretzky, our famous hockey player. And then little old me, my face is etched in the wall right next to all of them. And mm -hmm. so I went on from being a teacher to a decorated athlete, you know, mm -hmm. bronze four and downhill skiing, and then a World Cup sailor, sailing mm -hmm. against able-bodied men with arms and legs and uh, 27 men and only three women and everybody with hands and feet. And, mm -hmm. and I was in a World Cup race in Melbourne, Australia, kind of your neck of the world. So exactly. <laughs> I did a lot of sailing in Australia, which was fabulous and mm -hmm. so great. And so as a decorated athlete, I ended up uh, becoming a transformational leader. I got my master's in business and I busted up pilot strikes at Air Canada and I crushed barriers for Uber to break into Canada mm -hmm. and our national pharmaceutical you know, in Canada, we paid for pharmacy and then overnight that policy changed. Mm -hmm. So all of the businesses, 55% of their profits were cut. And so overnight, they needed a new way of busting up and not stopping. They needed to refuel their unstoppable and they needed to re-engineer some greatness like with you in exactly. the leadership world. And so I, I ended up being a number one transformational leader of 160 countries with John Maxwell. Some of your leadership wow. world might know John Maxwell. Oh, so as yeah. a female, transformational number one leader as a female. Uh, they have a famous football player as the male and uh, the rating title. So oh, okay. So all that's... of that. And I was born a four way, my hands, my legs. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's going to show up. I'm going to try. There we go. I got my dress and uh, missing my legs as well. Mm -hmm, uh, both mm -hmm. legs above me. And uh, okay. shows anybody can be unstoppable. Me, you, all of us together today, this morning and this evening, depending on where you are in the world. Mm -hmm. And I love your energy. And that's why I really wanted you on the show to bring this energy, to bring this fire, because, you know, it's just amazing to see. And I really wanted to ask you, you know, were you born with it or did you develop this energy? Because it's just, I mean, it's, it takes the whole, the whole room because when we, you, we are in your presence, it's like, you know, it's burning of energy and, and it, it's, it's amazing. So how did you develop that? Is it something that you were born with or is it something that you build up with time? So I kind of, there's the secret of what happened, right? And so I say that, I was born limb mm -hmm. at Liss. And I spell limb with a B, limb, L I M B. I was born limb mm -hmm. at Liss. I feel so lucky to have been born limitless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really do feel like being born this way was a massive part of this energy, as you say. You know, I didn't talk, it's hard to imagine, but I didn't talk till after I was two years old. And I believe that, you know, as a child in a pram looking out, everybody that sees me without my arms or without my legs, you know, they look and they're like, oh, and there's a gasp and there's a fear. And sometimes there's tears. And even now in 2020, there's still tears. And so as a young child, I learned quickly, like if I look them in the eye and I smile and like, it's OK, it would flip them. 
And they would go from being that horrified face to, oh, she's smiling, I'll smile back. And so I think being born limitless taught me early to adapt and connect so that I could have people feeling in a place of, okay, it's okay, we're energized, we're happy, we're okay, you know, no need to feel sad. And so it taught me how to adapt and connect. And, and being born without my hands and my legs, you know, I was also just a kid, right? I wasn't a hero. I was born this way. I didn't choose to be this way. And I just wanted that cookie in the cookie jar, right? And so just like any other two-year-old, I did whatever it took to get to the cookie jar. And so if that meant climbing or rolling because I didn't have legs or whatever, and if I didn't get the cookie, if I couldn't reach it, I didn't stop because like any other kid, I just wanted the cookie. So I did whatever it took. I just kept falling and climbing and trying and trying. And so, so that sort of unstoppable way was because of being born limitless. And then I fast forward and that, that helped me in kindergarten, that helped me in sailing, that helped me in skiing, that helped me I was the first four-way amputee to climb the Himalayas of Nepal, the largest mountains in the world. Uh, and, I, and I still think maybe the only one, potentially. Uh, but, uh, and, and people say, oh, you did that in 91. And they kind of feel like, it's funny now. They're like, well, you got this energy, Trace. They almost think that I'm lucky. They're like, well, that's you. You're an mm -hmm. athlete and you're unusual. But... I actually had to adapt and connect, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they say, oh, you did that when you were young. And so now, now I'm 50. Mm -hmm. and, and in November, I scaled, I repelled, I lowered myself on the outside of a 25-story high-rise downtown Toronto building. Mm -hmm. say, I could do that in 91 in the Himalayas, or I could do that now at 50. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter, right? Anything is possible when you put your mind to it. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's and that's the key is that you know because for us we focus on the body, on everything external. But then for you, you're talking about the mindset. And when your mindset is strong and when you know what you want, whatever you know, whatever you you look like, uh, whatever thing that you don't have, you're gonna be able to go forward and uh, and do your best like, like you said and keep trying keep trying because your mindset is ready and uh, and you don't have you know you don't have those limitations and it again you know uh, prove that we only we are our own limitation and uh, that's that's really the the key and and i really want you to you know to explain you know the extent to which you know you accomplish, you know, certain thing, especially physical thing, because you, you, you've, uh, you, you went to the Himalaya, so you, you, you were, you know, one of the first and maybe the only one. You've been skiing, you've been uh, uh, um, selling. So explain to us how do you do all of this? I mean, what's next? You know? Right? How do you know? So and. A lot of times you, you need to embrace that possibility, right? Even if you don't know how. So, for example, with skiing, right? I've got no hands and no legs. And, and sometimes people that are paralyzed from the waist down, they use a sit ski. So it's sitting down and they have skis underneath the chair and they have outriggers, crutches. And they use their hands to hold the outriggers. Uh, but because I don't have my hands... In the sit ski, I wasn't able to independently drive. I wasn't able to hold the outriggers, the crutches with handles. And, and so we, were, we weren't like sitting on this chair at home thinking, how am I going to ski? How am I going to ski? Or in your world, like, how am I going to write a book? Or how am I going to start a business? Or how am I going to thrive in this pandemic when all of my business leads have turned upside down? Right? Like, I'm a... I'm a international speaker, a number one mega success international speaker. In 2019, I was on 20 stages. In 2020, I'd already been in 20 cities in North America and Europe when COVID uh, quarantined us all in 20 cities. 
And so in 24 hours, I had 24 stages cancel. And so my business, my way of paying rent was turned upside down like a lot of you too. And, and, and some people were laid off and children are missing graduations and they want to see their friends and elderly people are particularly vulnerable because of needing support and access. And so they're getting sicker tremendously, right? So you just don't know how am I going to thrive in business or how am I going to write this book or how am I going to date when I'm in quarantine? You know, all of these fun questions, personal and business. So think of your current story in my skiing story. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't sit on a chair at home and say, I don't know how I'm going to ski. Mm -hmm. I had to embrace the possibility that even though I don't know how, mm -hmm. I'm going to get out there. And so I got out there to a ski hill, not knowing how I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was sitting on a bench. And I was sitting on a bench next to my ski instructor. And remember, mm -hmm. I haven't got my legs on because it was best for the sit ski to have my legs off. And my mm -hmm. ski instructor is a gigantic fella, well over six feet. And he's sitting on a wow. chair on a bench beside me. Mm -hmm. And I've got my legs off and he has his ski boots off. And I'm looking at his feet and I'm thinking he has gigantic feet. Mm -hmm. And it's a little inappropriate. And remember, I'm a little bit younger and he's I'm thinking kind of inappropriately. My mm -hmm. thighs could fit mm -hmm. in his ski boots. Right. And then I got a light bulb. Mm -hmm. Mom guys my stumps could fit in his ski boots mm -hmm. and ski boots are angled so when i first went out just like with the sit ski i kept face planting so then i went out with the ski boots facing forward and i kept face planting mm -hmm. well then because i have no toes i have no feet we put the ski boots on backwards my wow. thighs in men's ski boots backwards mm -hmm. And you know what? I still wiped out in the trees 12 times. Oh. I have a picture of me in my ski boots backwards. Should mm -hmm. I pull that up? You can you can put it up so we can see because you know for us it's difficult to imagine. So yeah. everything everything visual will would actually help, you know. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to share screen my friend. I'm going to hit share for the world okay. to see. And uh, we're, we're learning all together, even though I'm not sure how to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm embracing the possibility and going for it. So I guess I click here. You're in the show. Am I sharing this screen? So yeah, you can share the screen. That's perfect. Uh, yeah. And then I, I share don't, it now? Is it I successful? Don't, I don't see it on mine. So uh, maybe. You, a stream okay. sharing your screen. So okay, I'm, that's. That's that's now on the screen, so you can talk through it. That's fantastic. Oh, fabulous. So I'm going to fast forward to the backwards boots, right? Mm -hmm. TEDx and TV host and best-selling author. This is a one-minute video of me jumping around a sailboat. Would you like me to show it or go forward? You can, you can, you can go. Go ahead. Just okay. um, then people can see how I sail, and then I'll mm -hmm. show you the backwards ski boots. Mm -hmm. So this is me right before the. I got quest for the gold in mm -hmm. Ontario, Canada, just before the unstoppable Tracy, Tracy Schmidt, Miami, Florida. And I'm from Toronto and I started and sailing when I was about 11 years old. You can see how I use my hands wow. to lines yeah, in. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and my legs are off. Mm -hmm. And in a minute, that's how I hold the tiller with my little arm. Mm -hmm. And how I climb in and out with my stubbies. And I use my teeth mm -hmm. to pull the line in. That's amazing. That's really amazing. And then there's... So you use every part of your body. Your chin, your arm, your legs. Mm -hmm. It's almost over. Ten more seconds. Philosophy of how do you know unless you try. Turns out if you try hard enough, anything is possible. It's not safe. So you can see that was a climbing photo and a rappelling mm -hmm. and water skiing. And this is me scuba diving, busting through barriers. 
And these are mm -hmm. my legs on the dock. And we're all kind of told no sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, and this is me at five years old. And you're going to see on a commercial break, the principal telling me no. And mm -hmm. this is my mom. And when I was a baby, I had a little hook. And these are my baby legs when I was mm -hmm. learning how to walk with legs. And so me and my mom. And uh, this is my kindergarten classroom. Mm -hmm. And this is when I won number one transformational female speaker out of 160 countries with John Maxwell. This is mm -hmm. me my teaching in Nepal. This is me climbing and rappelling. In, and this is me in a sailboat in Melbourne, Australia. You know, and this, we are all able to disarm our limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and so, mm -hmm. you know, the keys to being unstoppable as well, a bobsledding speed. I don't know if your viewers can see it. I'm in a pink jacket and a yellow helmet. Exceed yeah, we can see, I can see it. No problem. <laughs> Feeling uncertain is no excuse for an action. Embrace possibility even when you don't know how and earn independence. But I don't earn it alone. I learn it with engineering greatness with Muriel. Did mm -hmm. I get the name right? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. exactly. So mm -hmm. I was born this way. This is my sister. She's 11 months younger than me. You can see I'm the only one missing my hands and my legs. Mm -hmm. And when I started to sail... I often fell out of the boat and I failed. This is a 80s picture. They had bad camera resolution, but you can see me sailing with no legs. Mm -hmm. But I just kept climbing in the boat until I figured it out. And then I'm Melbourne World Cup sailor. Mm -hmm. But we mm -hmm. often have doubt. And, and so here's me getting a bronze medal in downhill skiing several years later. But mm -hmm. here's the picture I wanted to fast forward to. So see, oh, I'm yeah. Guys, yeah. men's ski boots backwards. Backward, yeah, that's amazing. Yes, now now I see that visual because I couldn't actually get it when you were explaining it, but yeah. now I see it's uh, it's quite amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'll stop the screen share. Sorry, I had to fast forward. How do I get out of this? Here we go. Mm -hmm. Back into seeing your wonderful face. So mm -hmm. I think you and I on screen again. Is that right? That's right. That's correct. Yes. So it's you and, and I. And it's just amazing what you you are able to do. And, uh, you know, when I see that, I mean, it's like, she's, how is she doing it, you know? And, 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 and like you said, you know, we have to go through those, you know, forget about those limiting beliefs and, and, and embrace the possibility because otherwise we get stuck. And yes. we don't, you know, we, we don't really progress. And one thing that I wanted to ask you, because through all this process, obviously there's your mindset, there's, you know, your, your energy, your optimism. So what what what's, what is the support system, you know, um, that you add, you know, what are the pillars of this optimism and this unstoppability, if I can, I can speak like that? Yes. Well, and, you know, I showed you the fast slide of the bobsled, super, like, mm -hmm. exceed uncertainty, feeling uncertain is no excuse for an action, even though you don't know how, right? We, you don't know how you're going to thrive in COVID or how you're going to get through this depression of loneliness, or you don't know how you embrace the possibility you can do it. And it is believing it, but it's also taking action, right? You have to get out there and do something about it. Even if your heart isn't in it just yet, you go for it. And you embrace, you can do it. But you said, what gives you that, posit that positivity? Like, how can you find the source of strength? And that's the third bit. Exceed uncertainty, embrace possibility, and earn independence. I love the caption. And take action. And earn independence. But that taking action isn't alone, right? It's earning independence. My lifeline is people like you, the greatness engineering hour. Right. I can listen for one hour and be all positive and feeling great. And it's kind of like perfume. I put it on. But then when I jump in the shower, it washes away. So, you know, what we need to do is we need to align ourselves. We earn independence with you, with greatness engineering hour repeatedly. Right. We need to reapply and stay in that mind frame of continually surrounding ourselves. Who do you surround yourself with? Is it people like Mural? Is it the Greatness Engineering Hour? Is it Unstoppable Tracy on your, my YouTube too? And, and so you earn independence by your lifelines. When you saw me climbing and rappelling and you think of me in Nepal, 
I, I look left and I look right. Right now, there's nobody in my house except for my my fish, right? I got my fish, me, myself, and I, and my fish, uh, and that's it. But and, and in that climbing, I felt the same way. I felt all alone on that cliff. Nobody mm-hmm. left, nobody right. But what I forgot was that rope. I'm not rappelling. I'm not climbing alone. Mm-hmm. I have somebody on my lifeline. I have somebody on my safety line. I have somebody Mm -hmm. on my belay line when I'm Mm -hmm. climbing. When I'm in a boat, I might be the skipper, but I have crew in my boat. When I go Mm -hmm. skiing, I have my ski instructor's ski boots, right? Mm -hmm. And so who I surround myself. So I have an incredible mother. uh, So I'm very lucky. Mm -hmm. And, And I don't know what's going on in your world right now. I don't know what's going on in your listener's world. So I'm blessed. I am so lucky to have had a phenomenal mom and dad and sister. Very, very lucky that I had these lifelines. And I know that, you know, I know right now horrifically abuse is up. I, I we, we see with Black Lives Matter the, mm-hmm. the outpouring of support in positive ways and not positive ways that's happening. Mm-hmm. And, we, I, I, and I don't know how that's impacting people's businesses and their heart and their soul and their children. Mm-hmm. And some people's, you know, my best friend, his, his mom died during this period and he couldn't even be in the hospital with her. Yeah. And, and so I don't know what's going on in your world. Mm-hmm. And, and so some people will say, well, yeah, you had a great mom. And so I've got some tough love for you right now. I know that I have every excuse, right? No mm-hmm. hands no legs, nobody in my home, my, my, all my stages are canceled, right? I have every excuse right now or in kindergarten or at other times in my life, right? I have every excuse. Nobody would judge me for being sad or for having a disability support pension or, or being home and staying in Toronto, not traveling, not doing climbing, not busting Uber into Canada, Right. Nobody would judge me. They would understand why, you know, I might be sad or if I'm single or not working or whatever. But I know when I have no excuses, I have no limits. So I don't know what's going on in your world. But if you live a life of no excuses, you get to live a life of no limits. So there's horrible things, very real reasons, like funds, heartbreak, illness, abuse, very real reasons, very real excuses. But when you live a life of no excuses, you get to live a life of no limits, no excuses, no limits. Mm-hmm. I love it. And that and that's really, you know, that's really what I really wanted to share today is that, you know, no excuses. We can always have excuses, you know, in everything that we do. But we have to forget about the excuse and look for, the, like you said, for the opportunity, for the possibility. And then try, even if we, even if we fail, continue, continue, because at some point we got, we're going to succeed. So we have to stop, you know, the excuses and, and really understand that we are limitless when we put our mind to it and we, we look at the possibility. So I see there's, uh, there's, there's a, uh, let's, let's go to the comment box. Uh, there's quite a lot of people today. So there's, um, there's Sean. Sean was my guest yesterday. We talked about domestic violence. So she's in Florida. Uh, so good morning, right to Kima and the guest. And she's uh, she's been uh, you know she's insp- inspirational. So she's enjoying really your philosophy and what you're sharing and your energy. And there's uh, Esther. Esther, I think I don't know where Esther is. Esther, let us know where you're watching from. I think it must be Kenya. I'm not too sure, uh, but uh, you know she's also very inspired today. And I told you she is exceptional. She has so much energy, and she has no limits. So you can you can you can feel it. You know on the platform. I don't have to tell you anything. So let's have a break, and we'll we'll come back. Uh, and continue this exciting uh, and energetic and inspiring 
um, you know, conversation. And the principal says, I'm sorry, Tracy can't go to this school. My heart just drops. Tracy's got to be able to tie her shoelaces and she's got to be able to go to the washroom by herself. There's one teacher and 30 kindergarten kids. How can she manage Tracy as a four-way amputee? So she counter-offered. She said, how about you try Tracy just for one week? And he said, okay. So my mom and I walked up to the path of the school and she got outside of my classroom and she got down on her knees to look me eye to eye. And she grabbed my shoulders and she said, Tracy, it's really important that you and everybody's included nobody left behind and i didn't know why she was so intense but i'm like okay mom <laughs> so he races outside and he's looking for me and he doesn't see me anywhere 15 minutes go by the recess bell goes I never made it outside. His heart dropped. So he goes inside to find my teacher and ask her what happened. He said, couldn't Tracy tie her shoelaces? And the teacher says, oh no. Tracy was the first one with her shoes tied. He asked her, what happened? She said, well, one of her little friends couldn't tie her shoelace. So Tracy gave her a hint. It turns out none of the 30 kids could tie their shoelaces. <laughs> Thank you. Everyone included. Let's be everyone included. Thank you. So we are back with Tracy. We are back with Unstoppable Tracy. And, you know, you can feel the energy and you can feel, you know, you can understand, you know, why I wanted her on this platform to share, you know, with you to have a, 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 a deep conversation with you. And, and I hope that you're taking notes and after that, that you're going to take action on what she's going to share today. And, you know, Tracy, I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, how was it growing up, you know, as, as Tracy? And uh, when did you become unstoppable? Do, so for those listeners that heard the kindergarten story, mm -hmm. that, it was so, you know, it's unstoppable, Tracy. But I like, when did you become unstoppable? I think when I figured out the ability to create and refuel an unstoppable you. Mm -hmm. right? so, mm -hmm. so I was a little five-year-old that just wanted to play at recess. But when I figured out, well, it was absolutely extraordinary to be able to tie 30 shoelaces, like creating an unstoppable you. And it was so much more fulfilling to be a difference maker than it was just to play at recess. And so growing up, I was lucky because there was 30 kids that were my allies because I helped them get outside to play at recess, something that every child wants to be able to do. But there was definitely bullying too, like, and, and I think a lot of people get bullied. And, and so I was on a front lawn, for example, at my, my house, and I grew up in affordable housing. So there's a lot of gravel around. 
and in between the houses. And I lived on a fairly steep hill at the top. So I'm sitting with my legs off on a blanket on a grassy lawn. And all of the kids are over there playing on a bit of grass over there. And I'm waving them over and saying, come play over here. Because I couldn't get across the gravel. And, and they didn't. And I heard one of the kids say, don't, don't talk to her. She's weird. Just ignore her. And, and so as a little girl, I started to cry. And my mom saw through the front window and she opened the door and she was looking at me crying on the lawn. She's like, what's wrong? And my mom said, what's wrong? And I said, whoa, I just want the kids to come play over here and they won't. And, and they're saying mean things. And then my mom looked over at the kids and she looked at me and she said, how's that working for you? And she shut the door. And I'm devastated. I'm like, oh, my mom is so mean, right? Because she shut the door. But And then a minute or two passed, and I realized my mom's not mean. I have every right, every right. Nobody, none of you listening would judge me for crying on the front lawn for getting bullied, right? For being teased. So I have every right. I could sit there and I could cry. Or I could sit there and I could cry and then I could do something about it. And so I rolled down the grass hill and on the, on the road there, there, there was a skateboard really nearby. And remember, I got my legs off, but I'm missing both of my legs above my knees and I'm missing my, my left arm. But on my right side, I have a, an arm. I'm missing my hand, but I, miss, I have an arm. So I sat on the skateboard and I like to say I borrowed the skateboard and I took my long arm and I sat on the skateboard and I skateboarded over to their grassy patch and I rolled up their hill and the kids were all like, oh, and they're big wide eyes. And I don't know if they were wide eyes because this girl with no legs, no arm and no hand rolled up the lawn or it felt more like they were like, holy cow, I can't believe you know, the bully basically said, don't come over here when he said, ignore her. And I had some nerve to roll up the front lawn and show up anyway. But I knew in that minute, they're all looking at me and they're kind of stunned silence. And I knew I had like a second to speak because if I let the bully speak, the whole environment, the whole conversation would go down a different way. So while I had that moment, that opportunity, that second of a window, I just sort of petrified, scared out of my mind, right? Like a lot of us. So courage isn't without fear. Courage is in spite of fear. I take a deep breath and I, like you see me pulling my shoulders up. I sit up as tall and strong as I can and I make eye contact, even though my heart is upside down and scared. I make a smile and I put a, a smile on and I'm like, hi. I'm Tracy. Can I play? And the bully was caught off guard. But I didn't get off that easy. So the rest of them are like, oh, I can't believe she just asked that. And the bully's not knowing what to say because he's not expecting me to ask to play. So he says, the new kids always it. So you know, my gut was kind of like, oh, I don't know how to play. And how am I supposed to run around and play tag? And I can't play the game you're playing. I want you to play a different game because it's easier for me if we're sitting. And I knew none of that would wash, right? None of those excuses would work. The kids who want to play tag, they want to play tag. So even though I didn't know how to play without my legs and all that gravel, I just said, okay. You know, none of those kids ran off that front lawn. Nobody ran onto the gravel. So even though I didn't know how to play tag, I just said, okay. And all the kids stayed on the lawn and I got to play tag. And, and they had me play forevermore. Mm -hmm. And so again, you know, disarming, limiting beliefs was a bonus that I got to learn how to work around at a very young age mm -hmm. that, that now I got to bring into COVID, 
I got to bring into Uber busting in a can. I got to bring into pharmaceutical reform, right? Mm -hmm. I got to bring in as a humanitarian in 20 countries with no walls or doors or blackboards or books and be a teacher in 20 developing countries, right? You just work around it. You say, okay, and jump in, even though you don't know how you mm -hmm. figure it out. Exactly. And and that's sometimes the problem. We want to figure it out before jumping. And sometimes you just have to jump. And then you, like you said, you're going to figure it out. You're going to find a way to, to, to push forward. And, and it's actually the best way to, uh, to, to, to do it. And that's, that's exactly what we call stretching our comfort zone, because you have to put yourself in a situation when you are uncomfortable to really you know start to grow and start to learn and start to stretch yourself and uh, and that's that's very that's very important and you know I, I'm, I always ask myself you know you know knowing what you do and you know um, you, following you and 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 seeing everything that you do I always wonder you know do you have role models because you already so confident and uh, and and really you know just like you said, jumping and doing, you know, trying different things uh, until, you know, even when you fail, until you, 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 you manage to, to do them. So who are your role models? Yes. And I think that's important. Who is your role model, right? Who are you surrounding yourself with? Uh, you know, you and I are saying jump out of that airplane, right? Go for it. Mm -hmm. But make sure you know who packed your parachute. Mm -hmm. right who is your yeah. role model who's packing your parachute right it's so true and and it, it's it's I'm, I had a ski instructor I didn't just jump into his backwards boots I had a ski instructor with me to problem solve but so when I was you know eight years old I showed you that picture of me in a sailboat without my legs and I kept falling out of the boat mm -hmm. I am so lucky that that 18 year old sailing instructor, when I was eight, remember I'm like no arms, no legs. I had freckles, I had red hair, I had braces, I had glasses, I had no hands, no legs. And I'm falling into Lake Ontario where there's ferries crossing back and forth to Center Island. It was mm -hmm. a very dangerous area, open water, open lake. And, but I'm wearing a life jacket mm -hmm. and I'm the best swimmer. All of the kids with their arms and their legs they all fall out of the boat too right mm -hmm. and and so how come it's different for for me I can swim and I got a life jacket on right I know who packed my parachute I've got a life jacket mm -hmm. and so this woman Kathy Smart she was brave enough to say she likes to swim she's climbing back in that boat and and everybody's like but she's failing right I I knew the parts of the boat I knew the points of sail but if you can't stay in the boat, you can't get your white sail level one. Mm -hmm. And but Kathy, this 18 year old, she said, what do you want to do, Tracy? Right. She says, I want to keep sailing. Mm -hmm. so you let me come back that next summer. And I learned how to balance in the boat. And it turns out that's an advanced study skill. Right. Mm -hmm. Balancing in the boat, looking ahead. Right now we're in COVID. I'm in my apartment. But if I look ahead, what is the forward propel forward idea right mm -hmm. you said what you focus on grows that goal and so she was so great that she was brave enough even though i was falling out in lake ontario with no arms no legs glasses braces freckles right that she mm -hmm. said okay mm -hmm. and, and kathy smart she was the same woman who i worked with she was the leader and i was the at that point i was around 18 i was the um, co-facilitator. I was the, the assistant mm -hmm. uh, in Nepal. And so she and I went to Nepal together and she and I went, worked on a tall ship in the North Sea, uh, which is around Holland. Mm -hmm. And I went on to captain a tall ship in the Eastern Atlantic where everybody was able-bodied and Kathy wasn't there, right? But Kathy Smart, she, she always was like my mom. Right. My mm -hmm. mom said, how's that working for you? Mom didn't say, oh, come in and have a cookie. She said, how's that working for you? Mm -hmm. So Kathy Smart, when we when I was climbing that picture that some of you may have seen 
uh, in Ontario before I went to the Himalayas and I mm -hmm. got stuck in the middle of the cliff. And some of the other instructors were like, okay, we understand if you can't do it, no problem. And Kathy was like, no, she's only tried for like one minute. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. No problem. You're going to help her back off. And she made them wait 30 minutes until I figured out a way to do the next part of the cliff. Mm -hmm. Right. And my mom didn't, didn't say, well, did you ask them nicely? She didn't give me tips. She's like, How's that working for you? Right. Mm -hmm. So all my my mom and Kathy Smart, they were these tough love, strong women that they're my mentors because they made me figure out how to do it for myself. Mm -hmm. like they jumped out of that airplane and pulled the toggle. What happens when I jump and they're not there? Mm -hmm. right? They didn't. They, that's no good helping me doing it for me. I needed to learn how to problem solve on my own. So that right now, when I am on my own, I can still do virtual and do webinars and still pay my rent for businesses that are trying to figure out how do I reinvent myself? How do I refuel my unstoppable? How do I have stress management and balance and, and keep going and be creative? How do I activate capability and change in my staff? So these are the kinds of webinars through storytelling that I share with corporations. So I'm still getting my, my mortgage rent paid and my rent, I own a mortgage and I'm renting, I'm doing both. And, uh, and, and those bills are still coming. I haven't had to borrow money from a government and it's okay if you did mm -hmm. because I reinvented because I learned a long time ago how to reinvent. We're like, mm -hmm. okay, it's okay to cry, but cry and do something about it, mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. figure it out. And so my mentors have been tough love women like you, my friend, powerful, greatness, engineered. And, mm -hmm. and I am so blessed and so lucky to be on your magical show. I feel mm -hmm. honored to be here with you because you are also a mentor. <laughs> It's am it's amazing. I mean, it's you know, and, and that's why you know, knowing you, I said I have to bring you so people understand, you know, the power of uh, the no excuse life because sometimes it's too easy for us to to make excuses to not to to become the best version of ourselves. Yeah. And and it's important that you know they come and see somebody who have all the excuses but don't use the excuse and go to the limit and that's that's very important and i hope you know people are taking notes i hope people are being inspired and i hope people after this you know this conversation are going to understand that they have no excuse to become the best that they can be and and that's that's very that's very important so i mean one question that i ask myself obviously you know you've you've stretched yourself and you've you've done you know so many things and you 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 unstoppable but do you have any doubts you know sometime and any regrets in a way oh yeah oh, definitely definitely mm -hmm. and even like i'm sounding all positive like oh pandemic okay how do i reinvent like i it wasn't it hasn't been months of positivity or mm -hmm. you know 24 7 Right. There's definitely ups and downs, even in the isolation of the pandemic. Right. Mm -hmm. And now I know Australia is being different than Toronto or like everybody mm -hmm. around the world is, is treating it differently on how much isolation or not. But mm -hmm. you know, I was uh, I had this fabulous job. I was I was eight years with Air Canada, our national mm -hmm. airline, and there was a pilot strike. And I helped them bust the pilot strike. And then there was a bankruptcy, like airlines around the world. They mm -hmm. had to reinvent when discount airlines reinvented the airline world. And I helped them through bankruptcy. And then, then there was merger. Canadian Airlines and Air Canada had to merge. And that was mm -hmm. like a, a stressful work environment. And I was part of the organizational leadership team that helped mm -hmm. them with the merger. Eight years was fabulous. And then... Then pharmaceutical reform hit. So I jumped businesses and I helped them with the government changing the way they do business. Mm -hmm. And all we did was we increased beauty, we increased baby items, and we increased food items. Mm -hmm. And shame on us 
for doing mostly pharmacy when we could have been making money in food and baby and beauty all those years mm -hmm. before. So, so the hardship caused us to reinvent and do even better after. But when that ended, this 15 years of all this great consulting, I was in a parking lot and I was super sad. And I, and I knew that another door would open. But in that moment, I, what you focus on grows. And I was sad that the contract had ended. And, and I knew if I drove home like that, some, I would maybe have a car accident or I would invite a telephone pole to fall over, or I would make a bad decision driving while you focus on grows. And so I was having trouble reshape my hardship, you know, and uh, of knowing, knowing that I could have a new job. But in that moment, it was still too raw and fresh and vulnerable. So I thought, oh, sailing. And so I got on my cell phone and I Googled some sailing because in Toronto, there was no sailing or skiing in Toronto in October but there was in San Diego. So 11.30, my, my contract ended. 5.30 on that Friday, I was on a plane to San Diego and I went for sail, sailing at a regatta. And I didn't know there was Paralympic sailing. I just went to go sailing. I just went for a pick me up weekend. And uh, when I was flying home, Hurricane Sandy hit and it was, uh, it, it, it flooded New York subway. It washed away homes in Rhode Island. You know, it was a, it was a terrible storm that devastated, uh, and, and killed many. And I was in the air in the airplane flying home to Canada, to Toronto. And so I thought with the plane with terrible turbulence, I thought I was going to die. And, and uh, we all believe in different things. I believe in God. And I said, God, if I live, I want to pursue my Paralympic dream. And the plane went dead straight. And that could mean anything, but I made that mean it was a sign. And so when the plane landed in the parking lot of the airport, I started to phone lots of people. I'm like, how do I pursue my parent? And everybody said, no, 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 there's no way. And I said, well, how if I waved a magic wand? They said, Magnus Lidgetal. He's a gold Olympian. Mm -hmm. and, and he never answered my phone, my email. Uh, my LinkedIn, my Twitter, my Facebook. He just, he didn't answer any of those things. Mm -hmm. So I drove down five days. I didn't know how I was going to fill my gas tank with no lakes. You know, was there full serve in the United States? Like I didn't know how it was going to work, but I climbed out my car and you know, I never filled one gas tank. When people saw me get out the car and bum shuffle to the back of the gas tank, people came, truck drivers, motorcycle riders, mm -hmm. And, and people that you would least expect were most helpful. Mm -hmm. And I never filled my gas tank once because I was in action, right? I wasn't just mm -hmm. batting my eyelashes in the front seat looking pitiful. I was in action trying to figure out how am I going to get gas in this tank? Mm -hmm. Because people saw me climb out and try to get the gas thing in the, in the gas tank. They, they joined me. Mm -hmm. So I got there. Magnus Lidgetal, even face-to-face, -face, wanted nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. I slept in my car for three months Ooh. in Magnus's boatyard. So, you know, a plane devastation, five days. I, everything I own, my bed, my unit, I put, I put on Kijiji and lived in my car for three months. So I definitely had some down days. Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. day I would look in my rearview mirror. And for most of the days, for two months, I would say, today's the day Magnus is going to coach me. Mm -hmm. And I would wash his boats and wax his boats. I was kind of like Karate Kid, wax on, wax off, but with boats instead of cars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then on the 90th day, and I'd had lots of down days, but I talked. And some days I would say in the mirror, today's the day. And I'd believe it, and I'd jump out of my car. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it took me 12 times to talk to my mirror to say, today's the day. And then I'd jump out of the car. But I never jumped out of my car until I believed it. And so mm -hmm. I had to talk to myself in the mirror a lot before I got out of the car every morning, 5.30 a.m., because that's when the sun rose, and that's when Magnus was washing boats. So mm -hmm. every day at 5.30 a.m., I was washing and waxing boats with him. Well, on day 89, mm -hmm. I couldn't get out of the car. I just didn't believe it. Um, and so I stopped saying, today's the day Magnus is going to take me. On the 89th day, I said... 
I, cause I couldn't do it. It was 15, 20 times in the mirror, my rear view mirror of my car and I couldn't get out of my car. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to do to get out of my car? And that day I just said, today's the day I'm going to be the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. And that I could believe, right? I had control over that. I was putting too mm -hmm. much control into Magnus. Mm -hmm. And so that day, today's the day I'm going to be the best version of myself. I'm going to disarm my limiting beliefs and I'm going to do my peak performance, best version of myself. Mm -hmm. so I got out the car and immediately in the parking lot, someone was struggling with a line and I'm a good sailor. So I know my knots. So I helped him with the, with the line. And then I got over to the dock and where I would normally go to wash Magnus's boats and things. Mm -hmm. and someone was having trouble getting a boat in the water. So I helped them with the crane because for mm -hmm. three months, Magnus had taught me the crane and bits and pieces. So mm -hmm. I helped with the crane. Well, Magnus saw me helping mm -hmm. with the line, helping with the crane, helping all these different people. And I was just being the best version of myself, being supportive mm -hmm. as a sailor and, and, and work in the docks, right, with other people. Well, when Magnus saw that I could do all these things, helping all these other people, he comes over and he's like, Tracy, you can sail. Mm -hmm. That's I'm like, it. Yeah. like for three months, I've been trying to convince him. Mm -hmm. So, so what do I do now in COVID in my own house? And when I was living out of my car for 90 days, eating Cheerios with no family and no, you know, life, but my gender preferences is, is men, like no boyfriend, no no, like there was all my money was like on Kijiji and spent trying to get a boat for competing in the Paralympics. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I'd taken my down payment for a house and everything mm -hmm. was, was going all in for this coaching with Magnus and I wasn't getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's mirror self-talk and you got to have control over that. Mm -hmm. And you don't get out of your car, your house, your mind. You don't take action until you believe it. It's that Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm. What you mm -hmm. conceive and believe, mm -hmm. but then you have to achieve, right? Mm -hmm. you have to, people forget that. Take action. It's not just believing it. You can mm -hmm. see it, then you believe it, and then you achieve it. You do whatever it takes to take action. I drove mm -hmm. down there and lived out of my car for three months, right? It didn't just, he didn't just say, oh, how sad this girl has no arms and legs. He said, I train men and I train gold Olympians. I don't mm -hmm. train people with disabilities and I don't train women. This is a male dominated gold Olympic sport. Mm -hmm. But I ended up in 113 races against men, male mm -hmm. dominated, able bodied men while I trained. And that was really great for me when I tried to get into Paralympics because who I surrounded myself with were people that were, were much stronger, right? If you want to be a, a basketball player you're not playing with the local kids try to hang out where the the people the the provincials are or if you're a provincial mm -hmm. level, try to hang out where the national players are right i wanted to be in a, a paralympic sailor so i didn't live in toronto where there's no sailing i moved to miami and surrounded myself with gold olympians mm -hmm. so who do you want to be who are you surrounding yourself with i'm surrounding myself with the greatness engineer superstar during COVID and this pandemic to make mm -hmm. sure that I've got somebody that's thriving and surviving in mm -hmm. my heart and in my soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And that's, you know, and that's worth, uh, you know, reiterating because sometimes people don't realize that, you know, it starts with us. And then, you know, when we know what we want, we have to create the environment or find the environment. If we're not in the environment, we have to find them. So it's always a step. And that's why, you know, I always talk about stepping into something, stepping into your greatness, stepping into your power, because you have to take action and you have to make a step and go toward what you want. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's very important. And I hope everybody is listening. And I can see that, you know, the, the, the comment box is, is on fire. Uh, so there's we have a few people that you know came in. Uh, so there's Tucho watching from uh, South Africa. 
Uh, my my sister uh, Lotus, Lotus is here. Thank, thanks, Lotus. And then she's on. Like you know, I encourage you to share. Yes, like, share, and you know, start watch party because we're really learning from an unstoppable woman today. She is without limit. She lives a life without limit, and she is so determined. Whatever the challenge that she has in front of her, she just keep going. We have Lilian. Lilian is what is watching from Switzerland. And uh, so she's saying that you are amazing and thank you for the example. And, you know, she's, she's really, um, we have Angie as well, Angie from the US in Washington DC as well. Our true power lies within, so we need to release that power. And that's what you were, you know, talking about just now. We have Bernadette as well from the US and uh, she's uh, she's just you know summarizing everything by saying amen and uh, you know th there's there's nothing to add basically and she's she's saying she's just confirming what you said believe it and take action and uh, again you know bernadette she's uh, she's she's very active today and uh, it's it's just amazing what's going on and I don't even know how to stop this conversation because you know time is is running is running out. But I have another question for you: Is you know, with all of this, I mean, I'm just blown out since you know I've been I've been knowing you. I'm just blown out by what you've done and what you keep doing. And I'm asking myself, what's next for you? What's really next for you? Because you know. It looks like you never stop. So what next for you? And what is the legacy that you 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 working toward? Oh yeah. The it's funny, the legacy you work towards. And I spent a lot of I think because of without my hands, without my legs, and people tell me no, and a lot of our listeners are told no or underestimated, right? Oh, mm -hmm. you're a woman and that's for men or black or white or tall or you know, you're too tall to dance or you're too small to play basketball or or, or I didn't have the grades in school to write a book or, you know, we all have these stories and people underestimate us even when, mm -hmm. and, and worse when we underestimate ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the big turnaround came. And, and so I spent a lot of time proving, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. I can't ski. I can't sail. I can't get into kindergarten. I can't, you know, bus Uber into Canada. Like it was always kind of me, me, me. I'm unstoppable. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. And it wasn't until it flipped. And I, I really, really deeply got the unstoppable you, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of survival coping mechanism in the pandemic too. You know, if you're finding yourself really down, or you don't know how to reinvent your own business, or you don't know how to cheer up your own kids, you know, a really great mechanism is to make a difference for somebody else, mm -hmm. right? Make a phone call or or leave a lovely card outside somebody's door that might be lonely. Like, look at these children painting rocks that say hello for a neighbor. Mm -hmm. And so they don't feel alone and making a difference for the unstoppable you. And so being able to talk to all of you to un refuel unstoppable you, that's refueling my soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so my legacy uh, that I would love is that refueling unstoppable you. I wrote a book, Unstoppable You, it was a bestseller. You know, mm -hmm. on Amazon but and in Canada with my publisher, you know, there was 4,000 copies sold before I even printed it. And now there's well over 24,000 copies sold in Canada, which is mm -hmm. a big number in Canada's population side. So Unstoppable You, and you can get a free download of it, Unstoppable You, mm -hmm. uh, go to unstoppabletracy.com and I'll send it to you. And it's a coaching book. So for coaches, they can self-coach or they can repurpose it for others. But mm -hmm. it has the kindergarten story and the Magnus sailing story. Magnus from Switzerland by our Switzerland friend. And it mm -hmm. has the, has all these stories, sailing, skiing. They're in there. But at the end of every chapter, it asks you, you know, what's working for you? Mm -hmm. What's not working for you? So what are you going to do with this insight? As, as an example of chapter two question, every chapter is a different series mm -hmm. of questions to refuel your unstoppable. But my adventure legacy is to um, go to the North Pole, be the first woman with a disability to go to the true North Pole. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's my adventure legacy. 
um, my world yeah. legacy is the Refuel Unstoppable You. The book, mm -hmm. Unstoppable You, is free download. You can use mm -hmm. the questions yourselves, repurpose mm -hmm. them in your own coaching or use them on self-reflection. And for you to also refuel unstoppable others. Like I love how we've been focusing on no excuses, but the bonus is no limits. But this is also true for us as parents and mm -hmm. for us as coaches is be careful not to spoon feed our children. Be mm -hmm. careful not to over support our clients. If we're a supervisor or a volunteers or a boss of some staff or we're a CEO with our VPs, you know, careful not to seagull manage our children, our volunteers, our staff, our employees, our directors. How do we refuel unstoppable others? Mm -hmm. My legacy is I hope that it's contagious that we that contagious that we empower people to be self starters. We empower people their unstoppable own version of themselves. Mm -hmm. How and do that? We and that's yeah. key because sometimes we we want to have control on yeah. people and not only on ourselves but on people and we don't give our ourselves space to you know to refuel our unstoppable us or even to try to extend you know our unstoppable us and be, and, and really you know try to reach self actualization and that's what this show is all about it's that that's why i bring people like you uh, friends that I know that, you know, are going to really, you know, show people that, you know, they, they have no excuses. They can become the best version of themselves. And whatever the challenge, whatever the obstacle, whatever the environment, they always have to look for the, the opportunity and the, the possibility to go to the next level of their greatness and not stop and get stuck where they are. And I love really, you know, what you said is that, you know, it's refilling us, but also making sure that we don't control others and we don't, you know, uh, feed spoon them because they, if we do that, they, they actually don't develop and they don't grow. And, and it's important. Yes, we give them, you know, we give them the knowledge and we guide them, but they have to do it themselves. Yeah. They have to take action. Yes. yes. Exactly. They have to jump out of the airplane. You can help pack the parachute, but they got to mm -hmm. jump out of the airplane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and really, you know, push them to, to take risk because, you know, uh, you take risk and you grow. And, uh, and as long as, you know, you don't die, you know, yeah. you still have, you know, the opportunity to go further, to step into your power and to engineer greatness into your life and the life of others. And so it's really, you know, it's really powerful. I don't want you to leave, but we only have one hour and yeah. it's, uh, it's just crazy what's going on. So, you know, just to because i see that there's a lot of people around and you know how can they continue the uh, conversation with you and uh, and how can they contact you and how and you you were talking as well about your book is is there any other book or any service or anything uh, an event or i know i mean you you're stuck now at home until uh, the covid is is uh, oh. you know is is but uh, just let us know what's what's going on right now with you and uh, what do you really want us to know? There's lots of events, lots and mm -hmm. lots of events. They're just virtual, which is even better because people from South Africa to U.S. to Australia, all around the world can join us now. Mm -hmm. So it's even better, the virtual events mm -hmm. that's going on. So uh, if you follow Unstoppable Tracy, and I like to joke just to help remember no hands, no legs, and no letter E in Tracy. T R A C Y, mm -hmm. Unstoppable Tracy. And mm -hmm. I'm on, so look for my events on Facebook, Unstoppable Tracy. I have a business page and my Twitter, Unstoppable Tracy, my Instagram, Unstoppable Tracy, my YouTube, Unstoppable Tracy, my website, Unstoppable Tracy. I'm, and my Pinterest, everything, everything, everywhere, mm -hmm. whatever your favorite platform is, look for Unstoppable Tracy, no E, and you will find me. And mm -hmm. uh, you can follow the events and, and please like uh, and comment and follow and LinkedIn. Let's be friends on LinkedIn and message mm -hmm. on LinkedIn. And so you'll see events that you can join in and fill your souls with. 
Uh, I am an executive coach. Uh, but it's a very high level coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's m- mostly my reach to everyday folks and people stretching and growing on their journey are through the platforms uh, and and the book. If you want a hard copy of the book, you can certainly I can mail you one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get a free download if you like. So find find events and find coaching if you're looking for that. You know, mm-hmm. I wanted mm-hmm. Olympic status. So I had to invest a lot for my gold Olympian. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I I also want to make a difference for everyone at every level. So there's lots of virtual events to support anybody wherever they're at. Mm -hmm. So make sure you you take notes and where to you know to connect with Tracy uh, without the E and stop about Tracy everywhere. You'll find her. And uh, where if you have the opportunity, I mean. It's just mind blowing to to get and see us speak live. So if you have the opportunity, please do it. And uh, and and I mean, you will feel the energy. You will feel the fire fire after after a session. So make sure you get this experience because it's it's really out of this world. And and uh, and 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 really take you know take the opportunity to to connect with her because she has you've seen I mean in one hour the energy that she's poured into the the platform is just amazing and I'm really happy to to know her and to to really interact with her so I mean we we're gonna we're gonna you know finish the um, the session unfortunately I can stay with Tracy for hours mm-hmm. but um, you know. We, we we have to you know at some point to say bye bye, but before we before we leave, uh, so we we have another show tomorrow. Uh, so I'm bringing also an amazing lady, so Dr. Bindu Babu. She's based in uh, in New York, and we're gonna talk about. Uh, she just released a new book. And the book is uh, is called My Soulmate, My Love, My Narcissist, and is based on a protocol on healing and recovery for narcissist, from narcissistic abuse. And so, Dr. Bindu is um, she's a successful integrative physician and celebrity transformation coach, and she's also a very powerful businesswoman. She's a, she's also a humanitarian, and uh, you're gonna you're really gonna have a treat. Uh, with her as well tomorrow and uh, otherwise um, for those who still don't know uh, how to connect with me uh, so then you know my email my website www.mirettulekima.com I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. So, and I also have a unique name, so you can't miss me as well. So that's uh, that's that's what's coming, and uh, and yeah. So it's it's the end of uh, this uh, you know this conversation. It's been it's been mind blowing, and and I know that you know the audience really you know appreciate the input that you brought. And, uh, and and it's really going to stay with them uh, for a long time. But like you said, and like I always say, it's not about just keeping the knowledge and listening to those, you know, those, uh, those show and podcasts. You have to take action yes. and implement it, you know. If you don't do that, then it's a waste of, waste of time and waste of energy. Yes, you had a good time, but... We want you to implement. And I always say, don't leave anything on the table of life. Step into your greatness. Go to the next level of your greatness. I'm bringing those exceptional champions here for you. It's for your success. So please, you know, try to emulate them at least, you know, try to emulate them, take action. And like Tracy was saying, no excuses, you know, leave life of no excuses and and you will you will have a limitless uh, life so no excuses anymore i mean stressy has done it you can do it and uh, if i remember uh well uh, one of her motto is is actually um i can if i can do it you can do it no excuses so that's a motto please you know keep it with you and make sure you are you 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 follow you know uh, um, her advice.
because she's done it, you can do it. So Tracy, before we leave, you know, uh, what is the last, uh, last message or last words that you want to leave the audience with? Well, to disarm your limiting beliefs to, for peak performance, for the best version of you, the secret is to exceed uncertainty. Feeling uncertain is no excuse for inaction, even if you're falling out of your symbolic boat. Mm -hmm. Embrace the possibility, even if you don't know how. You don't avoid failure. The only difference between failure and success is one more try. Walt Disney failed nine times before he became Walt Disney, went bankrupt nine times. Exceed mm -hmm. uncertainty, embrace possibility, and earn independence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you earn independence is not alone. You earn independence with our fabulous Murray with the Greatness Engineering Show every day and with Unstoppable Tracy. Be sure to subscribe and get the free download of the book so we can stay connected forevermore. It's so no excuses, embrace no excuses. Yes. love it fantastic it's been it's been mind-blowing it's been you know it's fire for me so uh and 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 i've and i've i knew it because i've experienced it before so i hope everybody is uh is has enjoyed you know this episode of the greatness engineering hour and uh so we're gonna leave you with no excuses embrace the possibility earn independence and make sure you know you surround yourself with the right people and you take action thank you tracy for everything for your energy for your optimism and you are really unstoppable and uh, and i love you and uh, I, I want to say bye bye to everybody who's taken the time to tune in and i hope you've learned a lot from 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 tracy today and you are ready fully you know, fully empowered to take action and to, to step to the next level of your greatness. See you tomorrow. And, uh, and for those who are actually going to, you know, take a, a, a day off during the weekend, enjoy your weekend. And, uh, and, and please make sure that, you know, like Tracy was saying, she's been able to do it. You can do it. Bye. <laughs>